Hello there, my name is Anthony Barocas with Aiba Communications. Wait, I have, uh, my name is Anthony Barocas with Aiba Communications, and I am here in the new studio, and I am working on a very new solution from Panasonic. It's an iPad app. I am actually using an iPad right here, and I can show you what I'm using. This is the iPad app and it's called Live Control. And what it does is it allows you to connect various devices, including pan tilt zoom heads like the one I'm talking to right now. In fact, the audio is going into the pan tilt zoom head as well. The back of the camera has a plethora of ports that offer a lot of capability. We are only using the ethernet power and the audio in which you can, in the menu, set the line level or mic level or provide power and everything else. If you have an older system with RS-232C, you can control it here. You can have SDI out. Some models have HDMI out as well. There's an internal micro SD recorder and RS-422 control as well. The iPad is wireless. I have a wire coming out so that I can actually take the um, on-screen feed, let me tap over here, go back to the camera, so I can do live switching between multiple heads, between wired devices, other like camcorders, and also you can use iPhones as well using an app that connects wirelessly or via um, an ethernet connection to the phone or device. And that way you can have up to four sources connected to your iPad, but the key thing is, unlike any of the other iPad solutions that I've worked with, and I've worked with three of them, unlike any of them, this app lets you use professional pan tilt zoom heads from Panasonic. Now, these heads talk to this app, and I can control this head. Now watch, I am going to, uh, let me go back over here. You can see down the bottom of the screen on the left, I have presets and I can move these presets, I can set different things, and if you have multiple cameras, you would switch between the cameras over here on the left. Uh, I only have the one pan tilt zoom camera, so that's the one I'm talking to. You can see it up here on the left quarter view uh, of the preview, and on the right you see the program. So let me go back to the camera, no, so when I'm talking to the camera, this is what I call uh, wide. So you can see the table I'm talking, you see the whole set. If I wanted to open up closer, I would tap the preset and the camera goes there. This way I can have multiple different shots. And if something was really, really important, the extreme close up, and I can be very, very, it's so important that you understand the, the capability that this really gives you. You can have a professional pan tilt zoom camera, multiple focal lengths, change in focus, change in iris, all of these capabilities, and you can have this camera head way out somewhere else because it's networked. You didn't have to be in the same space as this thing. Let me zoom back out. That's kind of a little freaky. <laughs> so what that lets you do is that lets you put this camera anywhere you want. You can have a camera next to the stage that it's, it can look at the stage, it can look over here on the stage, look over there on the stage, it can look out at the audience, and you control all of that from the iPad. It is a real video camera that has multiple presets, and like I was showing you on the bottom here, I, I have multiple presets. So let's try something. So here on the interface, that little virtual joystick allows you to move the camera. So I can move it to the right. I can move it to the left, down, across, whoop, and then back. And then with the zoom control over here, I can zoom in. And you can see I'm recording it with a cell phone right now, but the camera is still live into the system. And down here on the presets, just come down here, let's just say I wanna create a new preset, I touch play that, I type in whatever I'm gonna call it, hit return, boom, that's saved. Now if I wanna go back to this one, I tap it, it goes back over to, the, to that shot. If I want this shot, tap it, it goes back over to that shot. If I want the wide shot, I touch the wide shot, and it goes right to the wide shot. 
So that's what makes this so effective in terms of giving a lot of variety to the shots that are available. Now imagine all of that times four, and you've got a lot of capability in this little app from Panasonic. So I can program in a bunch of these views, and what that enables me to do is have essentially not a virtual camera, but presets. These presets let me set up 10, 20 different shots ahead of time. Audience here, audience here, audience here. You know, so if you're going to have a question and answer thing, you can you know, chop up the whole audience area into all these different presets and have one camera cover the entire audience with all of these close-up shots. And then this way you can see where they are in the wide shot, ready, uh, 24, you know, boom you got that shot of that person talking in the audience and it's one camera not a bunch not a people running around and the nice thing is the cameras can be in the back shooting forward from the front shooting rearward or in the middle and you can get coverage both forward and backward i've used this on i've used a uh, pan tilt zoom camera on the side of a stage so i can overlook the person speaking into the audience that's a nice view and then there was a choir so we pan back here get the choir and then there was a piano player and it was actually right next to the piano so i spun it all the way around and i got the piano player so i had one two three and then i had audience shots this is you just get a little dome thing and it sits there and people really don't pay it any attention once it's into place and they're not very big. Um, I can't show it to you, it's right there. <laughs> it enables you such flexibility. Now, can you imagine going in there with an iPad and four of these cameras, just wire them out on a little network and you can control all of these shots from here. I still really like operated cameras in terms of following somebody on stage, going from side to side, and they're talking, no, 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 they're over here, and now they want to come out into the audience, you know, things you didn't prepare for. Having an operated camera really does pay off. But if you want to have that wide shot that you can always cut to, uh, you could use a cell phone for that. Now you've got a wide of the whole stage and some of the audience, and that just sits there. That's, that's always your backup. So that's four. And then you've got... The operated camera is one, and then you get two pan tilt zoom cameras, and you have all kinds of flexibility in terms of coverage and presets and capability in terms of a very low manpower, affordable, multi-camera, live switch, recorded, and streamed. Of course, this, this app does streaming too. We are live. It says I've been live for 10 minutes, and it also does audio. So let's come back into the interface here, and over here you can see... Um, I'm on the right hand side, you can see I'm adjusting camera one. So here's the optical zoom, the digital extender, the iris, the focus, focus speed, camera settings, and here's a good one if we keep going. We'll keep going. Takes you right to the settings of the camera for just the stream configuration, audio, system settings, image, image adjustments, and the network settings. So there's a lot of capability. Make no mistake, the iPad app is free. The cameras are not free. These are professional grade, professional level cameras that give you a ton of capability, a ton of configurability in terms of getting everything to work. For example, I plugged in this microphone over here and I just said audio on, turn on the plug in power, and then mic low level setting, what my bit rate is, hit save, I'm done. And it just works. If I want to set it to line level, I could do that as well. If I want a speech enhancement, a low cut, there's so much capability in these cameras. The system, you want the on-screen display. Do you want a tally? Do you want the camera to indicate when it's live and when it's not, or do you just want people to not know it's there? That's very important. Your output format out of the spigot is can be different than the stream. Your record tally is off. That's, mm -hmm. For me, I didn't want it to be like showing up like that. And then, oops. It doesn't matter. Image adjustments. You can come in here and adjust your image levels. Contrast, normal contrast, scenes, day or night. And then, of course, the network settings. So my network is very simple. Everything is finding itself. I don't have really have to worry about that. And in addition, when I'm in this app and I come over here to the camera settings, it automatically finds the camera on the network. 
So I don't have to like go and search it. I don't have to get the IP address. It automatically finds the camera and I just turn it on. Then if I had camera two, that's where camera two settings would be. Camera three would be there. Camera four would be here. And then this last one is things that apply to all four cameras, like my logo. I actually have it turned off when I go to camera two, which is the uh, capture, but I can bring up my title. Mm, no, I can't because I turned, yes, yeah, so you can see the little square it says it only works on camera one. If I touch that, I say, this will work on camera two as well, save. So now when I turn this on, it'll work on camera two. And I also have a picture in picture. So if I enable this, you can see now this is my picture in picture on top of the other display. This works on all four, so you can see this is how I set it up. My background source will be camera two, my foreground source will be uh, my image, and I can drag this all over the screen. I can make it bigger or smaller, put it over here in the corner, save, and there's a lot of capability there. Of course, there is also, when you have the one, two, three, four selected, audio. Sorry about that. So over here, you can see the audio. I didn't realize my picture was covering it. So you can bring the levels down like that. You can bring the levels up like this and leave it back. And then here, the second input is the HDMI adapter and there's no audio going into it. So it, that doesn't matter. And then, like I was saying with the layers, you just want to bring in, let's see, I got my picture in picture. I have a text, I have an image. Let's go get another image. Uh, we can bring in a video clip. Let's see if I have any video clips. Mm -hmm. Add a clip from my local storage. I have a clip, let's do that. Add a video to local storage. <clears throat> Hammer roll. Already exists in local storage, okay. So that one. Oh, okay, then I say done. So there's my video clip. I don't know why it's in a picture in picture, it just is. Uh, uh, uh. And then you can make it as big as you want so that when the video plays, it takes up the full screen and it's available on all four. Oh, it's over here. It's available for all four inputs. We're going to loop it. Oh, there you go. Expand. I hit the expand button. It goes there. Save. So now if I want to, do, 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 I have my video clip right here. <clears throat> it has its own volume control. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that if it has audio that's louder or softer than what's going on here in the studio, it allows me for each clip that I'm going to play back. This one was, oh man, it's super hot. I can, in the app, I can turn that clip down. This one's really quiet. In the app, I can turn that one up so that all the audio levels of what I'm doing here in the room, uh, any program audio that's coming in, and the video clips playing back, I can adjust them all so that's all nice and even all the way across. So that goes there, and then I just basically, you can see that the it's green, so it's ready to play. I just hit the play button, and here the clip plays. I believe I'm still talking over it, yeah, I am. And there is no audio from the clip, so at the end of the clip, it should just stop and do, 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 stop there we go and now we're back to me like that and that way is shows you a great way that you can really put these things together the yeah you know, the other interesting thing that you really aren't noticing is you know there's i don't have a ton of gear you know it's like i just have a table here and an ipad and the camera and a little wireless adapter that's really all the pieces i have yes i have a microphone too <clears throat> but in terms of streaming, I am pushing this live to Facebook just to test that as well. And this app also records it so you can do a live record internally. And that way you can immediately have a program, multi-camera, live switched, ready to go. Different settings you have in the live control app. You want to make sure that all devices are looking at the same network ID. You can change the transition duration. I have a short cross dissolve. Or change the cross dissolve. You've got different settings here. If you want to change the type of settings we have, uh, I just want to use a cross dissolve, not a minify and cross dissolve, but just a cross dissolve. We can close that. Save to a stream file. So it's saving it internally. Disconnect from your various services. You can airplay the audio playback. And then you have advanced settings. You have advanced settings down the bottom here, which will increase or decrease your video latency, default video bitrate, 
it starts at 3, it will go all the way up to 25 megabits a second. You're going to need a really fat pipe for that. But if you have it, you can have incredible quality coming out of this thing because this will do full 1080. Let's go back down to 3. Close that. YouTube privacy, Facebook privacy. So it allows you pretty granular control. And then one of the really nice features in here is if you don't know what's going on, there's a little question mark. You hit the question mark and it tells you it's like a help menu built in. So that really does have, really does help. Uh, local storage. So you can look at these via pictures or information like what was the date, which is very important. The thing that it doesn't tell you, same thing with Cinemaker, is it doesn't tell you the length, the runtime, or how much storage each one is taking up. You can export these to the camera roll. You can export these to the camera roll or import other things from the camera roll and bring it into the local storage of Live Control app. This Panasonic Live Control can have up to four sources active and they can be four pan tilt zoom cameras. They can be um, HDMI adapters. They can be uh, cell phones. They can be mixed and matched in your pro cam. It doesn't have to be all one thing either. It doesn't be if you have a pan tilt zoom camera, they all have to be pan tilt zooms. You can, let's go over here to the screen. Um, we come up here, you can see the visible devices the 147 is the HE40 from Panasonic that is on. Those are the settings we talked about before. The 185 is the uh, HDMI adapter. This is sold uh, from Cinemaker. And when you get this app, it will work with one device. It's free, works with one device, you're ready to go. All the titling and all that stuff all works. If you want to add more devices, you pay for a license from Cinemaker, which opens up the capability of the app. You can create different sessions with different content. So if you start a new session, you have no cameras here. It'll keep the content, but you can delete this content, bring in new content, and then you've got multiple sessions to pick from. Go back over here and exit this session. Over here's a control panel. You've got local storage. You can see the different pro different videos that I've done. You can upgrade the app. So when I come in here, it'll tell me that I have this account, four cameras connected. Over here is one camera connected and what the prices are down the bottom. My name is Anthony Barocas from Aiba Communications. This has been a quick look at the Panasonic Live Control app for iOS. Thanks for watching.